Esto, esto es un coche. Mad Wine is today in Marbella, in one of the most emblematic parts of the town, Puerto Banús. As you can see, this was the land, the playground, sorry, of the rich and famous, all the fantastic yachts, the very expensive shops. But the most interesting part is what I have behind me. It's called, that mountain range is called La Concha. It protects the city of Marbella from the northern cold winds. Uh, it creates like a rain shadow and also develops this fantastic microclimate that makes of Marbella one of the nicest places to live throughout the year. If you wait, I'll make it up to I started uh, studying medicine at the same time I was playing tennis and then uh, although I completed my studies I never graduated uh, I went back to coaching tennis and I had the chance to work with a very prestigious academy in Florida the Boletieri Tennis Academy and uh, when I got tired of tennis, uh, tired uh, also injuries, I decided to open my own uh, event management company, organizing tennis exhibitions, the World uh, Beach Soccer Tournament, the World Cup of uh, Indoor Trials. And uh, I always knew I wanted to do something in wine because when I was 14 years old, uh, my father took me to visit Viña Undurraga in Chile and uh, I was fascinated by the world of wine. Uh, just thought it was an incredible uh, industry and I wanted to do something, uh, kind of a wine bar or a restaurant with, uh, with a nice wine list. Instead, I decided to open the Wine Academy. You know, after we retired from organizing events and concerts with the Sting, Pink Floyd, uh, the idea was to be able to give lessons and conduct tastings in English for uh, the expats living in the Costa del Sol in Marbella and uh, eventually you know we started organizing large events and uh, educating people and, and here we are. Yeah, uh, you're right about that. Uh, wine Future uh, has been regarded by many uh, wine writers and critics like Robert Parker or Gary Vaynerchuk or even Jancis Robinson as one of the most important uh, conferences, if not the largest, uh, because it got it, it, you know, the, the ability of the, the program and my team to get together uh, 40 of the most influential people in the world of wine made Wine Future a real success. Uh, I know there's some people there that didn't, didn't like my success, but it was successful. And the reason why we decided to take Wine Future outside of Spain uh, and to Hong Kong is because I believe that an event uh, of this magnitude and with this approach has to go to a non-producing country, a country that doesn't make wine. It's much easier then for people coming from Chile, from Spain, from the United States, from Napa, to come to a place where they know there are no conflict of interest, they will be able to trade and to do business, network. And Hong Kong at the moment uh, is one of the most important cities when it comes to trading of fine wines. It has become the second most important city in the world for auctions, uh, has uh, surpassed uh, London and is just behind uh, New York. So I think because the name is Wine Future, the future of wine, fine wine at the moment is in, in Hong Kong and Asia. Is it in your heart to say that you can walk away from your big mistake?
Uh, indeed, uh, the third World Conference on Climate Change and Wine will take place in, in Marbella on April the 13th and the 14th. Uh, we are lucky to have the participation of some of the uh, leading experts in uh, sustainability, environment, climate change, coming from all over the world, from Napa to Bordeaux, Italy, Spain, and uh, the, the goal of this third edition is not to analyze what are the how the climate is changing or to discuss if it's changing or not and who's responsible. The idea is to provide uh, solutions, strategies, uh, leadership to the participants who will be attending, mostly wineries, uh, viticultural people, and on how to adapt and how to uh, fight the climate crisis. Um, this th third edition also has the the appearance, the participation of uh, Secretary General Kofi Annan, uh, who was also uh, the Nobel Prize winner. And between the, the wine experts and Mr. Kofi Annan, we expect to have a great conference. Why did we invite uh, Kofi Annan? Well, when we created this event in 2006, it was difficult to attract the attention of the media and it was almost uh, impossible to create the awareness amongst the, the, in the wine industry that we wanted about the climate change impacts. Uh, that's why in 2008 we invited Vice President Al Gore and he did the job. Uh, you know, we had a full house, 400 participants from all over, all, over, all over the world, 42 countries, and we did get uh, a lot of media attention. Uh, but not also, the, uh, we did it because of the media attention. Uh, the contribution of Vice President Al Gore was outstanding. Now for this third edition, uh, we were offered uh, Secretary Annan, and I think his uh, speech, his participation can be of tremendous interest because he's going to talk about sustainability, climate change in the corporate world. Uh, this conference, this presentation that will take place on April the 13th will be open to the general public, not only to the people coming from the, uh, the wine industry. Uh, from uh, a real estate promoter, to a banker, to a winemaker, uh, Kofi Annan is going to explain how important it is to uh, maintain sustainable practices in the corporate world. I think the industry in Spain started uh, to get to know me back in 2004 uh, because of an article that I wrote and a speech I made in a very large congress in Rivera del Duero where I was um, my argument was that not everything w uh, in the wine industry of Spain was as great as it looked like. Um, I call that the Spanish paradox because we have never made so much good wine, you know, very high quality wine. Uh, uh, the, the building of uh, impressive and um, amazing wineries has never been like this, but the consumption uh, has uh, decreased constantly and drastically since the 80s and the young, the potential young consumer has lost the interest for wine. Uh, this economical crisis, this recession we're going through, the only thing has, has done, it has, has really triggered the problem. And um, I think it is, uh, it is worrying that a country like Spain, third largest producer, largest surface under vine, second exported in the world, is at the very end of the list of wine consuming countries in Europe. We are in, 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 in position number 26. And also, and most, most worrying for me, is that the younger generation have totally lost interest in wine. That is what really worries me. Um, well, I wish I had the answer to all those questions. Uh, however, we have studied with my team uh, the possible origin of this uh, loss of interest by the, the younger generations. Our experience in sports and music uh, helps us a lot to understand what's going on. And I think it's because the wine industry has isolated itself from the consumer. We've created a barrier, uh, our own language, our own, own way of talking and communicating wine is uh, very distant from the consumer. We speak in a very sophisticated language that not only is not understandable by the consumer, uh, it puts them off, you know. And um, another reason is that um, Apart from communicating with the consumer, apart from uh, our, our own language, 
uh, we haven't managed to create excitement amongst those young generations. Um, uh, th there's many other reasons, uh, but I think basically what we have to understand is that we have to, uh, we have to be able to encourage with a very simple language, with a very exciting, exciting event, uh, we have to make wine approachable for the younger generation, and that could be the beginning of the solution. Uh, but also the beginning of the solution is admitting that one has a problem. And we, we have to be aware that wine consumption, not only in Spain, all over the world is decreasing. And once we admit that, I think we will be on the right way. yourself in a what what's the relation between wine and a Ferrari we are in Marbella Marbella is about glamour nothing more glamorous than driving a Ferrari and uh, this is because we have to make wine glamorous we have to make it exciting we're going now to a restaurant one of the classics for eating uh, red meat with a nice glass of wine in the Ferrari talk about glamour here we go Well, after driving a nice Ferrari, we are at El Portalón. This is the, the cellar. I'm with my friend Jesús Mancho. He is the owner. And when you come to Marbella, this is a must. If you like red meat, you like good wine, you have to come and see Jesús, who has just uh, told me that uh, he would like to have many more references. But because of the you know uh, recession and uh, this is low season also, uh, he, do he does have approximately... What are references? About 400 references from all over the world. So let's go and see, uh, let's go and, and taste a nice wine and a nice juicy chunk of meat. There are a lot of things going on for Spain at the moment. Uh, the most important is uh, value for money. Uh, a lot of the consumers in markets like the United States and Asia uh, recognize uh, that Spain offers a tremendous uh, ratio of value for money. People are looking for wines and af at affordable prices, but they can offer uh, pleasure, they offer quality. Also, Spain is, uh, is one of the most important countries when it comes to tourism, and being one of the top producers in the world, there should be a combination between those ingredients to make of Spain one of the top destinations for wine tourism. Unfortunately, um, we, we, we're not taking advantage of that. And from a marketing point of view, from an uh, image point of view, Spain has everything going for, 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 for the country. Uh, the brothers Gasol playing the NBA, Fernando Alonso, most probably is going to become world champion again of Formula One, uh, the motorbikes, the movie actors like Javier Bardem, actresses like Penelope Cruz, gastronomy, Spanish tapas are, are the flavor of the month, you know, if tapas are for Spain what pizza was for Italy in the 70s. Uh, all the ingredients are there and if Spain learns how to use that uh, from an image marketing point of view, they should be able to succeed and, and to increase sales and become you know, one of the leading forces in the wine industry. Can Spain compete with uh, Chile, Australia, New Zealand, Argentina? From my humble point of view, no, because Spain doesn't exist as a, as a, as a wine nation. Let me explain myself. Uh, Chile and, all, and, and Argentina and all these countries, they go around the world promoting their wines as a nation. We are competing as regions, Rioja, Humilla, Ribera del Duero, Priorat. They're too small to compete with uh, big nations. Um, um, what the industry needs to do is to uh, join efforts. And then you will only be, only 
you will only be able to compete with these countries. Another example is all these uh, organizations such as ones from Australia, ones of South Africa, uh, it's all the wineries from the country that they put money in a pot and that money is used to promote or to convince the consumer to drink wine from Chile, Argentina, New Zealand. In Spain, wines from Spain subsidizes wineries or regions to promote their wines so they are encouraging this fragmentation of the market. Uh, so the answer to the question is, uh, if Spain doesn't exist as a wine nation from my point of view, can't compete with, uh, with, with other giants of, of the wine industry. As she grows older, as she grows older, stories are told to her. Your head was... Domino de Tauta. The name of the wine, Valdegatiles, the appellation, Rivera del Duero, 2004. A very good year and a very good wine to go with this meat. What's the solution? Uh, the market, uh, the country, the different appellations, the different wineries, they have to get together and they have to join forces in two, in two ways. One, they have to put money, all of them, in the proportion of the amount of bottles that they sell or the amount of bottles they produce and they have to invest those funds in developing one strategy. One strategy with two goals. Number one, internationally convince people to drink Spanish wines regardless from the region the wine comes from. Once those consumers are aware of Spain, they will learn to choose between Pirat or Rioja or different brands. And on a national level, the strategy has only one goal, get more young people below the age of 35 to drink wine, to get excited about wine. And then again, they will choose one region or the other one. So uh, union, uh, funds, you know, all pitching with money with those two goals. Internet in the world of wine, I don't think is the solution to consumption. I don't think it's, uh, it is the future. Uh, of course, it's the way of communicating with the new consumer because everybody is uh, addicted, attached to internet. Unfortunately, there's been the proliferation of too many blogs. I've been doing a small research for an article that I was writing for El Economista, which is uh, uh, the, the, the newspaper in Spain that I write for. And uh, there were three times the amount of blogs in wine than in tennis, my former profession. And unfortunately, there's a lot of very bad blogs. There are very good ones, but there's very bad ones. Because anybody who has visited two or three wineries, tasted 20 or 30 wines, feels that has the authority to demand and to write about wine, to expose things and to criticize. Uh, luckily, this is an internet a uh, bubble, like there was a real estate bubble or a financial bubble that is going to burst sooner or later. People who have to find real jobs, they're going to have to make money. And when that happens, you know, the good ones will prevail and hopefully the bad ones will disappear. Oh, absolutely not. I don't think the consumer needs to be educated unless he wants to. Uh, I think there's a mistake to try to encourage people to have to take uh, tasting lessons or learn about wine to enjoy. Um, what I do think it has to be done is educate the trade, educate the people working in the, in the world of wine on how to sell, on how to make wine more exciting and how to communicate with the consumer. Yeah, but definitely not. I go to a restaurant, I don't care where the jamón, where the cheese comes from, I just want to be able to enjoy it. It has to give me pleasure. Same thing with wine. What people need to have, the youngsters need to be exposed to wine have a good moment, enjoy their first experience with wine, and then from there, things will get much better. If the consumer wants to be educated, let him ask, let him uh, uh, find for courses or for tasting lessons, but the consumer, we, we, if we rely on educating the consumer to improve sales, we're wrong. The Spanish Wine Experience is a certification program that we created back in 2006 
with the goal of helping Spanish wineries and Consejos Reguladores, Appellations, to find importers, wine buyers, or just to promote Spain amongst wine writers, wine educators. Since then, we've visited more than 60 cities in a little bit more than 20 countries. And for 2011, we have scheduled new countries, new cities, such as Mexico, Switzerland, uh, an eight-city tour in the United States. Uh, we're also going to Scandinavia, Germany, and we're going back to Asia, visiting Japan, Korea, Hong Kong. The goal, uh, promote Spain, promote Spanish wines, and help the Spanish wine industry to find wine buyers. Uh, yeah, uh, apart from the, the, the mega events like Wine Future in Hong Kong 2011, the Third World Conference on Climate Change and Wine, and the Spanish Wine Experience, uh, this academy, the Wine Academy, was born uh, with the purpose of educating the wine professionals. Uh, we have been conducting WSET, Wine and Spirit Education Trust courses, but we've added new courses to our portfolio. For example, uh, a, a course on English for the wine professional. For those people who have a certain command of the English language, we want to help them in uh, learning how to negotiate in English, how to uh, make presentations and conduct tastings, uh, and, and feeling more comfortable with the command of the, of the English language for the wine industry. Another course is uh, sales, marketing, and event management. We want to teach the wine professionals, we want to help them how and how to conduct tasting, how to make presentation of products, how to sell better. And last but not least, the same Spanish Wine Experience program, we are going to conduct it in Spain, in Spanish. We've realized that there's no program available about Spanish wines. So the program will be offered in 2011 to help Spanish people, professionals and enthusiasts to uh, know better Spain and its wines but also we are going to offer the course in Spain for those uh, professionals from overseas that want to take the program in Spain visiting different wine regions. That's our way, our way of contributing to create more awareness about Spain, to improve the, the knowledge uh, of the wine professionals and that's, that's what, that's what the, the Wine Academy strives for since we created it back in 2004. Yeah.